Thank you very much for the introduction. So in this talk, I'm going to explain how we can deal with the simulation of the human brain on uh, NVIDIA GPUs. How can we use NVIDIA GPUs efficiently to simulate the, the, the behavior of the, of the human brain? So uh, I'm not going to, to comment a lot of things about the human brain because in the first presentation, the presentation from uh, Professor Dick, have uh, given a, a, a very good overview about the, the human brain. So I just want to comment uh, two or three things. So Human Brain Project is one of the flagship uh, European project. It's a huge project composed by more than 100 different institutions. It's divided by different, into different uh, sub-projects. Uh, eight different sub-projects. In particular, the, the work that I'm going to present here falls into the sub-project seven. Uh, in fact, every sub-project is itself a very big project composed by a very large number of different institutions. So uh, just here, I just uh, wanted to include here some number just to show you how big is this project or how big is this uh, problem or this simulation. So in the human brain, we have something about uh, 80, 86 billion of neurons. If uh, I wanted to compute this, uh, this such a very high number of neurons on GPUs, I would need 80,000 volt of GPUs. And in money, only for GPUs, is something like 40 million, uh, 40 hundred million of, uh, of euros. So that is a very big number. So I just uh, wanted to include this number here just to show you how big is this project or how big is this, this, uh, this problem. So in the presentation of, uh, the first presentation of this track, uh, the presentation of uh, Dirk, Professor Dick, have presented different approaches, different ideas to simulate the human brain. Here I'm going to focus on just one of them. So uh, just to focus on uh, the work that we have done on GPUs, I have simplified this approach as maximum as possible. Uh, so basically, in this approach, it's divided into three major steps. Obviously, it's much, 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 and much, much, much more complex than this. But basically, it's divided, oh, well, the major steps are these. So first, we have a neural generator. We generate the map of neurons. After that, we have to compute, but maybe the main uh, computation that we have to do is the solving of the voltage capacitance of the neuron morphology. After that, we compute the spikes. Uh, we compute if, uh, how the spikes are generated and, uh, and, uh, and how the spikes are communicated from one neuron to others. So basically, this, uh, well, the neural generator is, uh, doing, is done or computed at the very beginning of the simulation, just one. The solving voltage capacitance had to be computed every time a step of the simulation. And the synapses computation also is every, every time of the simulation as well. But uh, the synapses is, more, is mostly communication and the solving of voltage capacitance is mostly uh, computation. That, that is because I'm going to focus on this step. So, well, first, uh, so to compute the voltage capacitance, we have to solve this, uh, this method, which is called Heinz method. But what, what this method come from? So, so basically, we have one neuron like that, and we discrete, uh, that neuron can be seen like a, a duck composed by different segments and nodes which connect the different segments. So if we discretize that morphology, we will have a, a matrix like this, which is called Heinz matrix. It's very similar to the diagonal matrix. Uh, as the diagonal matrix, we have three diagonals, or three vectors, sorry. And uh, the, the, this matrix has some uh, properties that we can exploit. For instance, it's symmetric. For instance, it's, uh, as I commented before, it's, com it's uh, composed by three different vectors. And we need uh, one additional vector, what, uh, which we call a P vector. So what we store in P vector, as you, have, you can see in this very simple uh, sample of the matrix, there are some off-diagonal elements. These off-diagonal elements basically 
are this node, which connect the different segments. So, and this can be, if we see this code, basically this code is the Thomas algorithm. The only modification from the, or the difference from the Thomas algorithm is this P vector. In this P vector, basically, what I commented before, we just uh, use this P vector just to deal with the connection point or the node which connect the different segments. This different segment can be seen like poor trivial problem. Okay? So this is the problem that we have to solve. But we have one matrix per neuron. And obviously we have a very high number of, of neurons. So we have to deal with a very high number of this kind of matrices. So uh, <coughs> what is the approach that we have exploited to compute this efficiently on GPUs? So instead of uh, make, uh, making use of a parallel method to saturate the GPUs or the GPU with a relative low for me, low is, uh, is maybe, I mean, I, I, we have to simulate the human brain. So what is low for me, maybe it's very big for others, okay? So just, for, <laughs> just for, for that, we have to try to saturate the GPU with the maximum number, in this case, Heinz problem as possible. So just because of that, instead of uh, using uh, one... Um, uh, <coughs> parallel method to solve this, we have uh, used one sequential method to solve one problem because we have enough parallelism in our application. And we have to solve a very high number of neurons. So also why we chose, uh, choose compute one, uh, one uh, neuron using one sequ uh, sequential code? Because also, Using sequential code to compute one problem, we don't have to deal with the synchronization and atomic operations. Also, well, this is the, the first approach, okay? However, just to use this, uh, just to use this approach, using just one thread to compute one problem, we propose, or we have to, to deal, how can we map the data to exploit that approach? So there are different data layouts. We have explored different data layouts. So the first one is what we call flat. It means that in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this image, we can see different uh, square from different colors. We can see that every color comes from a different problem, a different Heinz method, or a different Heinz matrix. For instance, the vector for the diagonal. Okay? The flat uh, data layout, in the flat data layout, we store the whole diagonal uh, vector for the first Heinz problem, then we store the second diagonal vector of the second problem, and so on. That is what we call flat data layout. The other, uh, the other data layout is what we call full interleaf. So instead of uh, storing the elements from the vectors, we store the element in this way. So first, we store the first element of the vector, all together, then the second vector, the second element from uh, all the vector, and so on. That is what we call full interleaf. And at the end, we propose something hybrid, which is uh, which we call block interleaf, which basically consists of uh, dividing the group of neuron in subgroups or in subbats, and then interleaf all the elements of these uh, neurons uh, using full interleaf. Okay, so why we use full interleaf? Why we make our life so difficult? Just because we have to exploit coalesce memory accesses. So that is maybe the most recommendable, or it's necessary, it's not recommendable, it's necessary to achieve a good performance on, on GPUs. However, for in, full interleaf, when I have one thread here to compute this element, and I have to jump to the second element or the, or the diagonal, for instance, I have to jump uh, as elements as number of neurons that I'm computing. So that could be a very high number. So just yeah, because to reduce, to reduce uh, this, uh, this jump in memory, we propose this block interleaf. Okay, so 
that is the that is uh, this is the problem that we have to solve. This is the approach that we propose, and this is the data layout that we are going to test. So first, we analyze the performance that we obtain uh, on the flat data layout. Our target. I'm going to show some number on uh, Pascal P P100, but now we are going to focus on KIT because well, is I have more number for for this platform. So. For a very simple test case with, uh, with uh, matrices with neurons composed by 300 elements and two branches. <coughs> branches. Two branches means that uh, it's like uh, if we remove S3, H4, that is our, <laughs> that is our uh, morphology that we are testing. Very simple morphology, just for sake of uh, benchmarking. So all the elements are double precision, different batch size. So what can we see here? So we see here that we, this approach doesn't scale very well. Not this approach, this data layout doesn't scale very well. This is the speed up against sequential code, so here we don't obtain any benefit. However, when we use full interleaf, the story changes radically. So for, for the same test case, we, in this case, we obtain a very good uh, scalability, but what is more important for us is that even from uh, uh, fi uh, 51,200 uh, uh, no, 51, elements until from this point to this point, this last point is more than half million of neurons, we still, or we continue scaling. So that is important for us. So what about the block interleaf? The block interleaf here, what I, so there are different uh, tuning, different setting to, to analyze how well or how bad the block interleaf can, can work. So we can modify, uh, so this, uh, this bar is for full, full interleaf, uh, but we can modify two different parameters. One of them is the size of the CUDA block and also the block interleaf size. So how, how, Match or how many uh, neurons I'm, uh, I'm uh, using for sub-blocks and what is there and also how many threads I'm using for the CUDA threads, for the CUDA block. So here, well, we see some, uh, uh, so please take a, take a look also at this scaling. I mean, there is not a big difference. We can see very high bar, but if we see the, 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 the less or the, the um, this number compared with this number is not a big difference. So even seeing these very high bars is not a big difference. So the use of this block interleaf uh, data layout is not, very, is not very interesting for us. Why? Because it's difficult to tune. It's difficult to know in advance what is the best configuration. Also, it depends a lot from the, it depends a lot of, uh, uh, on the, uh, input, the size of the matrix, the size of the neuron, the number of the, of the neuron that we have to com uh, compute, and the potential benefit is very low. So that is because we focus on uh, full <coughs> interleaf. So, but from all these results are just very, uh, I have used uh, input, very simple, just for benchmarking, but what about if, uh, if we use uh, real neurons? So we have used six different morphologies, real morphologies which uh, are divided into three different groups regarding the size, a small size, medium size, and big size. The small size are neurons which uh, are composed by uh, 50 elements. Medium sizes are uh, neurons which are composed by, uh, uh, the size of the vectors are something about uh, 400, more or less. And the big one is something about uh, 800, more or less. Also, we uh, use two different uh, morphologies regarding the, uh, the, the shape, I mean, regarding the number of branches. This 10% rep, uh, represent the percentage of branches regarding the size, the size of the, of the, of the, of the neuron. Basically, these branch, branches represent this, how many uh, uh, segment of how many connection nodes I have in my neuron. 
okay? So there are two different uh, factors here. One is 10% and 50%. And once again, we uh, carry out some experiments. So what we can see here, so the, the graph on the top are from, sorry, the, the, the graph on the left are for a low number of branches. The graph on the, on the right are from, uh, for high percentage of branches. The first, uh, the first graph are from uh, small matrices, medium matrices and big matrices. Big matrices is the same that big uh, neurons, okay? So what we see that our approach, independently of using uh, big uh, matrices or uh, a low ratio of branches or high ratio of branches or a big, uh, big neurons, we obtain basically the same, uh, the same trend in performance. And once again, what is very important for us is that we continue scaling, even when we compute a high number of uh, neurons. So, okay, the number that are here, I, we have done basically the same, but on Pascal. Because right now, just two minutes? Well, two minutes only. Okay, here, the, the thing that I want to highlight is that on, uh, on Pascal, we attain a very high occupancy. It's something very close to high uh, 100%, and a high bandwidth. I mean, the theoretical bandwidth for Pascal is something about 700, more than 700 gigabytes per second. We obtain 500 gigabytes per second, which is a still high, a high uh, bandwidth for Pascal. So, but uh, I present you one idea, one maybe crazy idea, about how can we deal with uh, the simulation of the human brain on, on, uh, on NVIDIA GPUs using what I have called Kuhain bats but I don't have anything to compare with. So as I commented uh, at the very beginning of my, uh, my talk, Heinz is quite similar to triagonal problems. So why not to do the same, just to remove in the P vector, but just for comparison. Uh, okay, in, uh, in QSPARS, there is uh, one routine which, uh, which is called GTSV to compute the batch of uh, triagonal. Comparing our approach to the approach that is in uh, it's, uh we can see that we obtain uh, a better performance than uh, that, uh, the, the routine that is in, uh, in QSPARS, in particular when dealing with a high number of uh, systems. Also, it's, uh, it's, uh, we need less memory and it's more uh, numerical accurate. So, just the last, the last slide. So all the uh, graph and result that I have uh, showed you in this talk is when we compute, when we have to compute a very high number of neurons, but basically the neurons are the same. But what about if I have to compute a very high number of neurons, but the neurons are completely different between them? So using this approach, we found uh, an important fall in performance even when we don't really, when using the same size but different morph morphologies. Oh, uh, we can see that the, the following performance comes from the, the, the how can we compute or when computing different morphology in parallel. It's not only for different sizes. So uh, we are working on that. This is the, now our challenge. I don't have a lot of time. So basically, what I wanted to comment is that, well, this is just the beginning of this uh, road. So now the challenge is uh, multi-morphology. Multi so this is the, are the papers and that uh, we have uh, published until now and uh, some acknowledgement. So, well, thank you very much for coming. <laughs>